Hey, what's up, mi gente? It's your girl, Tori Indeed, and our very special guest on Vibe to Vibe, Emma Rabbit, entrepreneur, creator, and owner of The Winyard. She's worked on the scenes and the airways from WBLS, Urban 95, Hot 97, and so much more. The first thing I ever did out of um, college, and I just love radio, especially music radio. Your forms of meditation and survival are full of cartwheels, yoga, and tattoos, but at a very young age, music and entertainment saved you. What was that moment of realization for you? Oh, man. You know, it really goes a long way back, all the way to like when I was in elementary school. Um, I think that I needed some fantasy in, in my life, especially like we used to go on really long car trips when I was little. And um, I've heard like Santana's Maria Maria like 300 times. <laughs> oh, I love like, Carlos Santana. He's anymore. one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, he's the best. I even got to um, work with Jerry Wanda later who did the baseline for that song. Oh, that's amazing. And Shout out to Jerry Wanda. Awesome suit. Yeah, that was for Wild Thoughts. They used that baseline. I was like, this is like full circle. This is crazy to me. But you know, I probably was like eight or nine and I started going on um, like LimeWire a long time ago and downloading, making playlists. And um, it really, it was like something that was totally mine that I could, you know, just enjoy and feel empowered and listen to music that was really like strong lyrics. Um, it helped me get through childhood. It was awesome. Well, as the entertainment industry continues to impact your life because you're still doing what you did when you were in elementary school, like you still have that love, that passion. Do you find yourself as a contributor because you're a creator? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, I've kind of branched into live events more than I was in the past few years. Now I'm working a lot more with like arenas and theaters, um, doing a lot of behind the scenes with the artists, like talent relations and stuff like that, even for comedians, for rappers still, for rock bands sometimes now. Um, but it really helps to have that creative background because a lot of times if you didn't know that, you know, you need all your different equipment for sound or you might think to ask you know, the DJ or the manager, like, is there a song the artist wants to walk out to or things like that are small details. I feel like a creator would think of that maybe somebody who's more um, on the logistical side might not consider. What are some qualities that you look for personally or qualities that stand out? Besides having a real great you know, confidence in themselves and knowing the material pretty cold, which I think should be a given. Um, I think that if you're able to adapt to the energy in the room and try to kind of like get people on your, on your side, even if they've never heard of your music or what have you, that's really valuable. I see it with comedians and with musicians. Like if you don't kind of make friends with the audience in the first minute you're on stage maybe up to three minutes you could save it pull it back it's a hard fight through the whole performance um and right. the great scene like they really can build that energy and involve the crowd and make it kind of a give and take instead of just only you know giving out the performance right I definitely value that because I've hosted many open mics, many showcases, and it's one of the things that you look for in a performer where they can connect with the audience or engage with them and be interactive. That's definitely a quality that you ought to look for and that adds value for everyone. Absolutely. You never know who's in the crowd. You would never know. We did a, um, a comedy show the other day and there were people from Def Jam in the crowd. So they could sign comics too. Like you never know who's listening. Navigating through the industry, right? So you do music, you do all around entertainment. What is your most favorable or proudest moment? Big or small? Oh man, my proudest moment. Oh wow. I've had some, I've been really lucky um, 
to do some really fun things that were kind of like on my list of goals, helping to launch Revolt with Diddy, helping um, designer go on tour. South by Southwest was so much fun with, with his team. But most recently, um, I was so thrilled because I just started kind of in the comedy world as well now in entertainment. And I learned that I actually get to um, host a night for Sypha Sounds, who does stand up. And Sypha was my my first music internship like so long ago that's <laughs> so cool <laughs> yeah I was like oh, for real like Siphon's coming I was so excited and he actually got to see me like you know when I was working for good music so he's seen my career like move and shape right. in different ways. and now you meet again so, <laughs> and now you know we're still connected it's awesome <laughs> that just just shows like your proven track record like you continued no matter what obstacle, you just held on. You let the entertainment and music, rather, save you. And you became a contributor. You became a producer. And now you are the connection to talent as well. The Winyard, let's talk about it. The events, the broadcasting, all around entertainment. It's super dope. Yeah, it's li- well, live events. So live comedy um, in Connecticut. and. Most recently, in terms of music, I hosted the Best of Bridgeport, which is the town I was born in, the city I was born in in Connecticut. And there's a lot of rappers around there. So it was like 20 rappers came out all from around the Bridgeport area. And we kind of narrowed it down. I had some judges also from Connecticut. Um, and yeah, we narrowed it down to one, this guy named Jimmy the Rockstar. He's awesome. He produces his own beats. He does all the singing, the rapping. Um, he's starting to partner with like creative directors for music videos. And I'm excited to do some publicity for him and get his name out there. Because, I mean, if you don't rep where you're from, why bother? You know, I feel like I worked in the city for so long, like New York City. Right. And I love that, that, you know, that experience is invaluable, really. It taught me a lot. But I was talking to this guy, Rob Alexander, who's a fantastic videographer. Like, he basically had the vision for, like, the Ciroc commercials when they first came right, out. Right, right. <laughs> first summer jam when they were kind of polishing it a little bit back in the day. And he was like, well, you know, um, Nike, they're based, like, where those guys are from. and nobody would really meet with them in the beginning but as the company grew now people go to nike for the meetings you know so if you build it and keep at it it might have some quiet years but when the peaks come like you'll be glad that you're not you know contributing to somewhere that you're not going to see the fruits of all your hard work so Connecting to your community is very important to you because you're obviously shining the light on where you're from and that there is talent there and giving those the opportunity. But I feel like you connect with any community you're involved with. Like you mentioned New York City, you were very heavily involved in the city. And no oh, matter where you go, you can yourself. <laughs> yeah, so, no, that's true. I don't know exactly why I'm... I'm able to to do that. I would credit it to being willing to learn and trying to be nice to um, everyone you meet. Like recently, the past few years, I've learned to set some boundaries I didn't really have before. But I think we learned that the hard way, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, it's like some it's a lesson you have to learn. But just being willing to hear what people are working on and. Um, tell them what you're working on is is great like gatekeeping isn't really worth the energy I would say I think that it will kind of hold you back in the long run and I've never believed in that I'm very about right like the bigger the party the better I'd rather do no business than bad business so I'm really yeah. I'm a strong believer in that that's super admirable because you're still doing what you're doing and you have your experience and you've grown from your own experiences too so I said, I want to talk to Miss Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to catch up with you. 
I always will like I always think when I think about those years like I always think of you and I'm like oh I hope she's doing good like you know I check on your social once in a while and all that stuff and you're so right it's like you know it's better to do no business than bad business and really like I think part of what makes you know especially entertainment so competitive is like every year you have brand new creators who are like let me try it it's my new year's resolution right. or I just got this new computer like I'm gonna try it but really I mean for me and I know for you it's like it's not like a fling it's like this is what I want to do so I'm gonna do this as long as I can do it you know and that's ultimately what's gonna unlock doors for people like just right. keep with it just stick with it you know no matter who's in the room you're not a groupie. You're there to be a professional and to coordinate. And oh, that's so important, <laughs> though. Like, don't ask for a photo. That's rule number one. <laughs> Do not. Like, if Unless they take it, they take that, it. You know? Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. Um, no. <laughs> so, you know, I've come across many, many, many um, actually mutual, mutual individuals that you may know as well or that you do know. And I think about it, like, I see pictures, people post, and it's cool because you admire them. Like, obviously, you admire their hard work and, you know, everything they've earned and deserve. Absolutely. What's that Jay-Z lyric? It's like, is it Jay-Z? It's like, act like you've ever been around people like this before. Okay. Like, everything needs to be in writing. Your paperwork needs to be correct when it comes to your music, your engineer. Ownership is important copyright the stems to the song right like you need right. to own the stems not even just the mp3 Correct. as a whole but every piece <laughs> right you know, get a people, good lawyer you know <laughs> yeah yeah like if you're gonna sample something make sure that's in order oh my gosh the worst is like in the radio days like it could be a hit on the radio it could be national international you could be getting you know thousands of spins a day but if you don't have rights to the sample you're not going to get any credit when it comes to like award shows or even getting paid for that song right unless you actually have the right to use it correct which is so important <laughs> yeah you're I, right I think you're right. yeah that's really really important so I love that and you did um drop some gems there you know you could have a hit and if you don't have yeah. <laughs> right so that sample, well, you're not getting that. You're going to be hit. <laughs> you're going to be hit <laughs> with a loss <laughs> or a lawsuit. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, they, yeah, you're paying just to, oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really mm -hmm. important. So I, I definitely appreciate those gems right there. It's hard. You know, some people, it is they hard. have all the talent. They have all the talent in the world. They just don't have the knowledge and that's where they may need someone like yourself or a manager mm -hmm. but it's also good to know who you're connecting with and trusting at the same time oh trust is huge trust is so big because you don't know who the people you're dealing with who they're dealing you might not meet them ever like i just go off energy and i notice really small things about the way people present themselves how they speak to me the words they use like you've got to be actively listening and trying to you know reading is fundamental so try to read the situation as much as you can before you find out the results of whatever's going on you know right right I agree I go off of vibes energy and I do know how to read between the lines and I I, I kind of you know you get your intuition you have to follow that gut feeling you get yeah. Like, if you're questioning them or something's questionable, then you may want to take a step back and analyze the situation, the opportunity. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I really started in radio, like, working for DJs. And DJs have it hard because they work nights most of the time. And they're always going from place to place to place to place to place. And it's always, like, when they get somewhere, they're invited five other places, you know, so they're always going and they're tired all the time and so it's hard to make those judgments and sometimes like I have a friend who he just doesn't say no he's really nice and he's been in rooms and been in danger just because he didn't draw the line like you've got to really right. try to 
conserve your energy for what matters, not for like every possibility. Just focus on your current goals. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I don't want to get a bill at the end. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I'll just I can recommend a book though. I love, I say go to the library if you're just starting out, but I love this book. I got it from my friend who owns her own um, record label and they make, you know, this is the second edition. They have a new edition now, but right. this is awesome because it gives you like real examples of stuff like, you know, the rights to your music or what a manager is supposed to do or things like that. I recommend it. If you're like wow. totally brand new, check it out. Thank you. Thank you so much.